Well, first of all, thank you so much in uh, giving me the opportunity to participate on this fantastic uh, conference. And uh, only the snapshots I experienced uh, during the last uh, couple of hours shows me that this is a very high-flying and ambitious group of people who really like to make a change. My background is and has been in science. Uh, I'm a passionate molecular biologist. My field has been microbiology and immunology. Uh, I have, however, to state the last 14 years were extremely pivotal for my life in that I gave up uh, my latest chair at the time at the Campus Vienna Biocenter at, uh, in Vienna, which is a research hub, which was a collaboration between Genentech, Böhringer, Ingelheim, and the University Institutes in order to set up biotech companies and this experience to build up companies that take fresh scientific ideas and move them back to the people has uh, greatly shaped me uh, in the last couple of years as much as the arrival of my first grandchild about 10 years ago. So uh, just to make a statement how I view innovation from what I have experienced. It's interesting, in the early 70s, there were uh, two places important discoveries made which have formed the whole biotech industry. In Cambridge, Köhler and Milstein invented the monoclonal antibody, which is one of the column of modern uh, biotechnology and biotech and pharma industry. And the other one is the recombinant DNA technology, which was his famous experiment by Stanley Cohen and Herb Boyer, first time cloning a single gene. Out of the hub of San Francisco, right away, the first biotech companies were formed, which in the end of the day have created not only zillions of new treatments against cancer and other awful diseases like autoimmune diseases, but also created a 300 billion euro biotech industry. In Europe, Köhler and Milstein went to the rector of the Cambridge University and said, is that whole thing patentable? And they were denied to get the money from the university to file a patent. The biotech industry of Europe today is not even 30 billion, so a tenth of the biotech industry in the United States, not to talk how many opportunities we have lost and how many smart brains have been, so to say, leaving Europe or even going today to Singapore. So, a famous physicist in your club, uh, Francis Crick, which I still had the chance to meet in person, he once said, and it's directed against my camp, he said, biology, Uh, is too important to be left uh, for biologists. And as a physicist, we know with his deciphering together with uh, Jim Watson of the structure of the DNA, he has done a pivotal contribution. And I would like to lean on this quote and saying, innovation is too important to leave it only up to scientists. Innovation is complex. We learned this several times at this meeting. You have to interconnect people. You have to form the knowledge triangle. You have to take business, Markets, on the one hand, you have to take education for the change of mindset, and you have to take first-class science. But there is one important ingredient missing, and this is the entrepreneur, something, a term which somehow, after the two historical disasters of the fascism and the communism, which got lost in Europe. I think in the 19th century, Emil von Behring, or Siemens, or Alfred Nobel, They found it was naturally to take what they have been learning at the university, to carry it forward and to bring it back to the people. So this knowledge triangle can only be created if we exchange. An exchange takes only place if you have proper ecosystems, if you have forums where a business person meets a professor, where the student has not an impediment to ask the professor the so-called stupid question or the businessman to help him writing the first business plan. I think in the same corner, we also need people who finance the whole thing. So we have to educate academia how to get equity financing to set up young companies spinning off the CERN or spinning off of great institutions like the Institut Pasteur, you name it. Because all the ingredients we do have in Europe. We have in Europe first-class research centers. We have fantastic universities. We have top-notch centers like the CERN, Max Planck Institute, and many others. But we somehow have not managed to get them interconnected to drive out of this tacit knowledge 
the momentum which is bringing the recognition what has been done in these different silos back to the people. This morning, the Austrian Nobel Prize laureate Schumpeter has been quoted, and he has said, innovation is really if an invention, a discovery, makes societal impact if it comes back to the people. As you know, only a few words to the EIT. The EIT tries to take this holistic approach. So the EIT uh, is not a research institute, even so some of the founding members were very disappointed that we were not building or trying to build up another good research institute. We are a high-impact innovation investment fund, and we only give seed money. We give seed money to people who are willing, across Europe, to one specific topic, let's say renewable energy, to form an ecosystem. So you get six, seven cities which form a hub, and you have integrated in this inter-European organization companies, universities, business schools, entrepreneurs, but also venture capital. And I think they're coming together in each city where they have a co-location center where they really speak to each other. And that's a real dilemma. If you, for example, have a scientific collaboration that you have been mentioning, like 100, 200 people writing together a publication, they don't need to see each other really. They can do this today already with the web. But if you have to explain a scientist how equity financing is functioning, or to a venture capitalist, why a scientist still likes to work two o'clock in the morning for this not coming in maybe before 11 o'clock in the morning. I think you need them in physical closeness. You need to put them together. And that's what we are trying in our knowledge and innovation competence centers. We have been building at this time about 16 all over Europe. So I summarize a bit in saying that it is the opening up. I think I feel, for example, that uh, uh, Carlo Rubia, he should give a presentation at the board meeting of Novartis, just what you learned in helping to maintain and build up the CERN. But at the same time, I feel it would be good also, the vice versa, we should invite successful CEOs to teach at our universities. And I guess we have to really, so to say, throw up the cards again in the air that they are falling down into place and forming a new ecosystem. And I think to this, the EIT, I hope, will and can contribute. Last thing, facts. You only can change things if you are more factual. And this is a part of communication also with journalists. It's interesting. I have been publishing many publications by myself, certainly more than 100 in the field of molecular biology. And I admit, even I have been always ending my publications, particularly when they went into the high impact journals and saying, by having discovered this, I may have paved the way, or me, we may have paved the way to solve the cancer problem or to do whatever. I once asked a student uh, working for me uh, in my company, actually, where we also have been educating PhD students together with the university, to go to the library and taking the 10 most high impact factor publications of medicine and biology and counting how often is this quote made per year, sitting in all these articles in all those journals in the libraries of our world. And he came back and said, this is a year about 30, 40,000 papers, ending with a phrase, by having shown this, by having discovered this, we can solve the problem. And then we made a calculation that today, to develop one new drug, one new medicine, one new vaccine, costs about between 200 and 800 million euros. And we came up, you need the cross netto uh, product of the whole world times 10, I think, <laughs> to just for one year translate all these papers into ever becoming products. I tell you this story, it is good that we learn from each other. And it's important to teach a student that while the professor can give him or her knowledge how to move something forward and understand something, it may be another teacher helping him or her to take this idea and to carry it forward. And we may need, again, other people who help to change the mindset of the students. So in concluding my statement, I have to say, this is the right approach, and we are going to make it, and let's do it. Let's go to action. It's much more important than always talking that we like to change things. Each of us in your environment change things, and I saw many good things at this conference. Thank you.